What's up everyone, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Crack Nank, and I am back with some more underrated albums. So this time I decided to take on Deathcore. Uh, this was a genre that I was very much a big fan of probably in the late 2000s to early 2010s. It was kind of a interesting like progression. I got really big into melodic death metal, then I got big into the metalcore scene, and then Deathcore kind of popped up and I was like, well this is insanely heavy and I really got into it. Unlike the new metal one, this is one that I don't think is necessarily old enough for me to really be nostalgic for, but it did have an impact on my taste and I, again, was really into it at one point. So this is kind of an interesting one because I really had to go back and listen to these to see if they still held up and there were definitely ones in here that I really still dig and I think are supremely underrated. Even fans of like more straightforward death metal I think could get into, but there were definitely some ones that felt pretty dated for the style. Again, I'm not the biggest deathcore fan now, but there are bands out there that I still appreciate within the style. So, we got 10 here, I think that are underrated, and we are gonna get into it. Rose Funeral, Gates of Punishment. This is the third album from the Cincinnati-based band. I never actually got a chance to see these guys, but I did see their bassist actually do vocals for the Faceless ones. This band started off as almost kind of more like Black Dahlia Murder-ish, their original singer, or at least the singer that was in the album before this, definitely had the more uh, prototypical like deathcore vocals where the shrieks were definitely very uh, prominent, but he'd also kind of go back down low. This one, the guitarist, I believe, took over on vocals, and I actually liked his vocal approach more. It was more of a straightforward death metal roar. Now, this actually has a lot of death metal elements on it. In fact, Steve Tucker actually shows up on here on the song False Divine, and it absolutely whoops ass. This definitely, of course, had all the hallmarks of Deathcore, loads of big chuggy breakdowns, that, you know, Deathcore syncopation, but this was very riffy, too. Grotesque Indulgence has some really good hooks on it, and they're more death metal hooks, but of course, again, let's kind of balance out with the Deathcore sound on here. When this band is at its heaviest, it's almost comparable to a band like Aborted, and there's even some brutal death metal elements on Arise Infernal Existence. The only song I really didn't get into was Malignant Amor, which has female vocals on it and it kind of tries too hard to be epic, but it didn't really work. But overall, this is a solid album. This was their most recent offering too, and this came out in 2011. I believe this band uh, had some you know issues in terms of breakups, reformations. I believe they are back, and I'd be willing to check out their new stuff because I really dug this album. I think their earlier stuff is good, but it's a little bit more of that style of deathcore that I'm not the biggest fan of anymore. But this being a little bit more closely rooted to death metal, I could definitely get into. So if you've never heard of this band, I would strongly recommend checking this one out. And then check out the other ones too, of course. But this one right here, good stuff. Ion Distance, Minus the Herd. Probably one of the more well-known ones on here. They were considered deathcore, at least according to Wikipedia. I'm just happy to include them because I still really like this band. This is the third album from this Massachusetts band. First one with uh, the then new frontman Kevin McCauley. And this kind of furthered their shift from, I guess what you could say was mathcore or math metal meets grindcore to more of like a genty style of hardcore. Loads of polyrhythmic breakdowns brilliant production on here by Zeus. Everything is mixed and separated really well and the caustic dissonant riffs all over the place. It has this really hostile atmosphere all over it and there's still a little bit of the math metal on there in terms of like Meshuggah-esque breakdowns which I still love that kind of shit. It really just kind of drives me sometimes. I still follow this band. I'm still a big fan of it. In fact, John is a huge fan of this band as well, and we still just like talking about how unrelentingly heavy this band is, but again, with that really cool atmosphere. I particularly love the songs Neil and Shunned Redeemer, which is just a beast of a song. But I think the technical elements on here and the fact that it was so polyrhythmic kind of kept it maybe a little bit in the outskirts of Deathcore, but I think at its heart it is still a Deathcore album. But this was actually really fun to go back and listen to. I hadn't listened to it in probably a couple of years and I forgot how damn good this album is. I like pretty much all their releases. I don't have the really early stuff, but if you were to start with Ion Distance, I would say this is a good starting off point because groove, hooks, and just nasty overall atmosphere. Awesome album, strongly recommend it. Dead to Fall, are you serious? Yes they were. This is the 
vinyl-ish album. They did reform, but they broke up not too long after this album came out in 2008 on Victory Records. This band's from Illinois, and they start off as more of a straightforward metalcore band slash melodic death metal, but Sully kept pushing their sound, and this pretty much ended up being a deathcore album, though I don't know if everyone considers it that, but I do, and it's fucking weird. It's a weird listen, but it's a fun listen. The opening track is an intro called IQ Test, and the next track is called Stupid with a question mark. And it is, but it is that fun level of self-aware, dumb humor and weird sci-fi themes. This album is all over the place. Like you have The Future, which is some weird sci-fi tale about uh, pushing an orb into someone's head and the mayor of the future, it's weird. But then you get, you know, Major Rager, which is just about a major rager and people destroying a house while getting drunk and stoned. This album is tonally all over the place because sometimes it gets really like introspective and strange like Loch Ness actually sounds like something that could have been on Mastodon's Remission or even Leviathan. And then Brain Melter has a very interesting almost kind of Meshuggah-esque breakdown to it that I think is really wild. Lots of weird sci-fi noises. This is such an awesome album. I still come back to this one frequently just because this was very refreshing when it came down to most of the Deathcore releases because it kind of just made fun of the genre just a little bit, but you know, it wasn't in like, you know, fuck this whole genre sort of thing. It was just like, yeah, let's just have some fun. Let's just be goofy and weird here. The album before this definitely had some of those elements, but they really played them up on this one and it just became this oddity of an album that either people really embraced or people flat out hated. I know like some of the reviews range from like great to what the hell is this? I didn't see a lot of in between on this one. I thought it was great. I love this album. It is gloriously weird. The guitar work is absolutely amazing on here. And again, it's unique. This one stands out in the deathcore pack or metalcore or whatever you want to call it. This is a deathcore album in my mind, but if you have never listened to this, I strongly recommend it. It is hilariously strange, and yeah, hopefully you get as hooked as I did, because this is just pure fun. Check it out. Abacab, Survivalist. This is the lone full length from this Virginia-based deathcore band, and the name I have to bring up because it is a reference that was also a reference. The name on here is not actually a reference to Genesis the band, but actually to the Sega Genesis in terms of the gore code for Mortal Kombat, which Genesis referenced Genesis, which is, you know, just fun and weird and interesting. But this is flat out brutal, groove laden deathcore, very similar to, I would say, like the slower moments of Whitechapel and bands like Acacia Strain, where it has a little bit of that down tempo sound. This is pretty much all breakdowns and all aggression throughout pretty much the entire album. Giant bass drops throughout here. Some of the breakdowns are a little bit more like straight up hardcore laden. In 2009, I might have been stupid enough to pit to this, but I didn't, and that's probably why I'm alive. I never got a chance to see these guys. They were kind of short lived. They really didn't do much after this. In fact, I think they broke up not too long after this release came out. Maybe a complaint I can make is maybe a few more dynamics on here just to break up the songs a little bit more, but the flat out primal heaviness on here was kind of what I gravitated to. But honestly, there was one really big standout with the last track being this really long, dissonant and ugly instrumental called Isolation. That song is just brutal, but very different. It's way more atmospheric because not much of this is based on atmosphere. I think the most atmosphere I really latched onto in here outside of that track was the opening sample and the introduction from the movie Pi, which is a really strange movie. And, you know, I thought it was just kind of interesting when they threw that in there. Solid album. I don't know if we'd ever do like a retro review for this, but I don't know, who knows? We might end up doing a retro review for it. We have a lot of stuff on the list. But yeah, if you just want something brutal, groove laden, and is pretty much about nothing else but being the heaviest thing that they could possibly be, Definitely check this out. Glass Casket, we are gathered here today. This is the debut album from this North Carolina band. Came out in 2004 on Abacus slash Century Media. And 
This band is relatively famous just in terms of the members that are in it. This is where drummer Blake Richardson and Dusty Waring of BT Bam actually kind of got their start. And the vocalist on here, Adam Cody, is actually the vocalist for the band Wretched, too. So, semi-famous members in here, and this is pretty much like wild technical deathcore, like Dillinger Escape Plan slightly meets deathcore. And it's brutal, it's technical as hell, and I still really dig this album. Honestly, I really did not even know what deathcore was when I got this. I mean, 2004, I think it was still very much in melodic death metal mode slash metalcore mode. Deathcore really wasn't even a term that I heard, but this would definitely be a deathcore release, and I noticed it was just definitely different. I saw it compare to metalcore bands, and I was like, well, it's metalcore, that's the thing I know. But the fact that this was so heavy, like loads of blast beats, loads of just flat out death metal moments, especially on the track, and so it was said, and the frantic highs to lows and the vocals, this was definitely something different. You can definitely see why Blake and Dusty got the job in BT Bam. The guitar work in here is awesome. Blake's wild drum work on Scarlet Paint and Gasoline might have been enough to get him the job because he's just doing some crazy stuff in here. And I granted he does even more inventive stuff now because he's gotten a lot better. But this was still pretty nuts. And they still had really good melodic hooks on here, like in between the sheets. This is a solid album. Unfortunately, the follow-up wasn't that good. But at that point, I think they were pretty much firmly entrenched in BT Bam. And the lineup, I think, is kind of shifted around. I believe this band is still technically active. Though they haven't recorded anything since, I believe, 2011, maybe? I can't remember when that follow-up came out. It wasn't as good as this. This one had the big impact on me. But yeah, if you have never heard this album before and you're looking for something brutal and technical as hell, and still with a little bit of death metal on it, definitely check this out. This is a solid album. The Famine, The Raven, and The Reaping. This is the debut album from this band, came out in 2008 on Solid State Records, and technically this is Christian deathcore. I mean, kind of metalcore, but I think this leans really heavily on the death metal side, so I don't know, I've seen it described as death metal and metalcore, which at that point I'm just call it deathcore because that seems pretty accurate. So technically this band is Christian, though they didn't identify themselves as a Christian metal band because they just said, well, well we have Christian members, we don't necessarily talk about all Christian themes. Now, they are on here, but the thing that I like is it's not preachy, so that really doesn't take away from anything for me. It's not a really a detractor. But what is on here is solid riffing, more death metal riffing on this, but it still has that, you know, death core energy on it. The breakdowns kind of sound a little bit more like, you know, early job for a cowboy. In fact, the vocals kind of have this interesting shrill scream that's kind of staticky sounding. I don't know what they did to his vocals in there, but it was kind of an interesting effect, and I really enjoyed it. Not the best mix on here, it's a little dry, but there's some really killer songs in here. Consume, Devour, Repeat especially, I think just is a pummeling song. And much like the guitar work isn't necessarily straightforward, like deathcore guitar work, like it's not always doing breakdowns, but when it does do breakdowns, they actually like doing more like death metal breakdowns. So I can see arguments that this is maybe more of a death metal band, but those core elements are definitely on here. And there's actually some really cool lead work, which lead work wasn't necessarily the biggest thing when it came down to deathcore in general. Like there's definitely tons of bands that did, but there were a lot of bands that just like, no, we can just sort of just rock this breakdown and get these pits spinning. I really like that the last two tracks, especially I think are really solid, especially Unending Silence. That song has some really awesome drum work on it. Now this band put out a follow-up to this a few years later. I actually just recently got that one. Uh, I think it may be last year, so it wasn't that recently, but it was also pretty good, though not as good as this one. And then they ended up breaking up not too long after that. But if you've never checked out this band, this is the debut to start with. Really solid work. Again, leans a little bit more towards death metal, so if you're more of a death metal fan, you might actually get into it. But yeah, recommend it. Check it out. The Modern Age Slavery, Damned to Blindness. It's the debut album from this Italian band came out in 2008 on Napalm Records. And I pretty much just picked this one up pretty much based on the cover because uh, I was into like deathcore at that point and deathcore covers I thought looked cool. Hindsight, it's it's an okay album cover, but I like this album because this was almost like deathcore meets death grind. 
a lot of the stuff on here just kind of reminded me of a more deathcore version of a band like Cold Worker. High octane, this is blast beats almost all the time, but they still have those really cool syncopated breakdowns. And a little bit of melodic death metal on here, especially the song A Dessert to Die For, flat out at the gate riffs. And they're very catchy, very tuneful, really good lead work on here, really solid technical play. And it doesn't come across as like, you know, trying too hard to like squeeze in more technical elements. They're just there in certain spots and they work for the song. The songs are just about being energetic and angry as hell and I would say they succeed. And when it comes down to breakdowns, they actually have some really, really catchy ones. The sublime decadence of an era and the title track especially. The syncopated chugs on that really just drive the songs. And I really dug this album. I still really dig this album, actually. It has enough of, again, that more death metal side of deathcore that I can really still get into it. And I gotta give them credit for their cover of Wolverine Blues. They did a solid job. Minus the stupid levels of feedback that kick off the song, which is damn loud. But overall, the cover of the song, really good. Now this is the only album I own by this band, so I don't know. I think they have like maybe a couple of follow-ups. I really didn't follow up on any of that, but I know I really like this and actually revisiting it, I might actually check out some of their other stuff because this is solid deathcore. And again, borders on death metal and I'm still a rabid death metal fan, so that makes this a little bit easier to digest for me. Definitely recommend checking this out if you've never heard it. I might actually go hunt down some of their other albums and see what they sound like now. But I know this one's good, and you should check it out. Halo of Gunfire, Conjuring the Dead. This came out in 2010 on Unique Leader Records. This is the lone offering from this California-based deathcore act. They actually describe themselves as melodic deathcore, which honestly, that pretty much means Black Dahlia Murder plus deathcore. Or at least it does in my book. That's pretty much the sound that I got overall. Though I gotta say, their melodic chops were pretty good. They love those At The Gates riffs and the In Flames melodies kind of sprinkled in there, but it stays tight and brutal and pretty solid, actually. The vocals tend to stay lower in that more like, you know, deathcore roar. You don't get a lot of the high-pitched shrieks. And it's not as breakdown intense as a lot of deathcore. This is actually more up-tempo. There are still breakdowns on here, but it's more kind of close to that melodic death metal side, except it's a deathcore band playing it, so there are definitely like you know differences. Like if you try to compare this to melodic death metal, it's not melodic death metal. It's still definitely deathcore. Most of the songs are really short, but there's some really cool stuff they do in it. The song Monstrosity actually has like a classical bridge on it, and honestly, the last two tracks, Monstrosity and Black Mass, really kind of. Uh, dial up the melodic death metal melodies. Like they did a really good job with the harmonies on there. Pretty catchy stuff, but it still remains pretty brutal. Now, I don't know what happened to this band. I don't know if they broke up after this. They trying to look up stuff on this band was a little bit difficult, but I think they're technically still around, though they haven't released anything except for this full length. But I gotta say, it's a pretty solid full length. It's a little short, but this does also come with their demo tracks, which were pretty decent too. I think they were definitely more refined on the full length, but yeah. Pretty solid album, and uh, I certainly recommend checking it out if you want something with a little bit more melodic flavor in terms of deathcore. Conducting from the Grave, When Legends Become Dust. This is the debut album from the Sacramento band, came out in 2009 on Sumerian Records, which Sumerian Records, along with that Abacab release in 2009, they were definitely big on the whole deathcore push. And that was, I would say, one of the big, like, peaking moments for deathcore in terms of its popularity. This band, also melodic deathcore, though I think they do it better than Halo of Gunfire. This is very technical, very lead driven. I was shocked when I actually came back to this that this had so much lead work on it. Like that is, again, not a thing about deathcore, but the melodic lead work is all over the place on here and it's really, really good. That and the songwriting I think in here is really good. This is about a lot of different kinds of dynamics. You know, the breakdowns aren't just like big open chord breakdowns. They pepper in lead melodies on top of that that really make them super catchy. And the melodic death metal aspects don't come across as just flat out Black Dahlia Murder worship, which, you know, there was a fair amount of that. I think there still is a fair amount of that. Damn good band, I get it. But this band was definitely big on like, again, interesting songwriting dynamics. There's proggy breakdowns on here that I think are really good. 
This is a good mix of brains and brawn on here because when it's at its heaviest, the breakdowns just beat the shit out of you. Vocals are particularly harsh on here, but really well executed. And when it's at its most melodic, it's very creative. And this was a long album too, which, you know, most deathcore albums really didn't feel like they were very long. This was 52 minutes and packed to the brim full of really killer songs. I still like coming back to this one. I have their follow-up, which I thought was also good, though not as good as their debut. And I believe this band had some issues with the lineup, so there were periods where they broke up and then came back. I believe they have a third album out there. I have never actually jammed it. It was an independent release, I believe. So yeah, this is definitely a Deathcore release I still really appreciate and I can still come back to and find tons of stuff I enjoy because, again, it was kind of broadening Deathcore a bit instead of just being primal as hell. They added some more nuance and musicianship became like a huge thing in here. So if you have never jammed this band, I strongly recommend this debut. Check out their other releases too. I still need to catch up on the most recent one, but this one right here made me a fan and it is still pretty damn awesome to come back to. Check it out. And finally, one of my personal favorites, Through the Eyes of the Dead with their second album, Malice. This is a South Carolina based deathcore band and on this one, they switched over vocalists and had a more death metal approach to it, which of course it sounds more like death metal, I'll probably get into it more. But on this one, the vocalist was actually from a Toledo, Ohio band called Premonitions of War, Nate Johnson, and he brought some absolutely nasty vocals in here. Now, I know their debut album, Bloodlust, is pretty highly regarded. A lot of people really like it. I still like it, but I wasn't necessarily always a fan of Anthony's vocals. I thought, you know, the high pitch, shrill screams and how out front in the mix they were on there were a little bit much sometimes. Nate brought a more death metal roar to it and he still had some high screams in there, but it was mostly about those big aggressive low vocals. And I think on this album, they became more focused as songwriters. Like these songs were a little bit more straight ahead versus Bloodlust. They were kind of a little bit all over the place, but that was something I kind of liked about them. These songs are just punishing. This is honestly, I think one of the heaviest deathcore albums out there. The song As Good As Dead has one of the most crushing breakdowns I think I listened to all throughout all my deathcore listening. But they still had some really solid melodic chops, a catastrophe of epic proportions, very similar to Black Dahlia Murder, except way more aggressive. Again, like keeping that low vocal range and it's just thick, chunky production too that just gives it a real nasty sound overall. There's even some really solid lead work on here, though most of the solos are kind of brief, they're tastefully thrown in there and they definitely add a lot to the songs. This album maintains an aggressive feel all throughout it too, which I really enjoyed. This is deathcore for death metal fans. If you're a giant death metal fan, you will find probably tons of stuff you like on here, but it is still definitely deathcore. Now, this band has had a ton of lineup changes, Nate, unfortunately, this is the only album he's on, though their more recent vocalist has done a really good job too. They have two other full lengths after this and both are really good. So honestly, I like pretty much everything by this band and it's still good. And this is coming from someone who's not necessarily the biggest deathcore fan anymore. There's still some stuff that I really like out there and Through the Eyes of the Dead is definitely one of those bands. So if you've never heard of this band, I certainly recommend checking out all the releases. This one is probably my favorite though. So if we ever do like a ranking once they get, you know, enough albums for us to really justify doing a ranking, know that this one's probably going to be number one. I still enjoy the shit out of it and it has aged really well, at least in my opinion. Definitely check this one out. So that knocks out another underrated albums thing. Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I wanted to do Deathcore because, well, we had some Deathcore releases and, you know, revisiting it kind of sparked my interest in the stuff that I used to listen to. And uh, those... Deathcore releases were decent to not great at all. Still not a fan of that Slaughter to Prevail album. But there's still a little bit of love for Deathcore in terms of like past listing out there. And again, these were some ones I definitely wanted to bring up. And I don't know, I might do a second part to this one. I don't know if I have enough Deathcore ones that we consider underrated just because I tended to buy like a lot more of the popular stuff. But who knows? I don't know, I might go off the rails and do like some avant-garde stuff or alternative metal. I don't know. There's a lot of different ones I could cover, but I thought this one was necessary and it was a lot of fun to go back and listen to some of this stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. 
We're also on Patreon if you'd like to help us out there. There will be a link below in the description. We also have shirts available. We're eventually going to order more, but we still have some left. And if you would like one, hit us up on thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. Make sure to put shirts in the message to us, and we will get back to you, get all your information, and hopefully sell you a shirt. We also have a giveaway going on. Once we hit 7,500 subs, which is, again, staggering for what we thought we were doing here, and we are eternally thankful for all of you guys. It's been so much fun, and we want to keep the fun rolling. But we have an 8 CD stack that includes the new Cannibal Corpse with the uncensored artwork. So if you want in on that, all you have to do is comment on the giveaway video, which will be linked below. It is also playing automatically on our channel. So put that comment on there, and you are entered. And once we hit 7,500, we'll do the little randomizer thing, and one of you will win. Again, thank you guys so much for being a part of this journey we are taking and hopefully you're finding tons of new jams to listen to or old jams to listen to just music hopefully you're finding some killer music that's the idea here so with that i thank you all very much and we will catch you later